didn't know you would be a barber? I would have to say that I did not choose barbering. Barbering essentially chose me and it saved my life. It changed my life completely. Initially, I wanted to be a surgeon. I spent a lot of time in the hospital when I was younger due to an accident that I suffered when I was a little girl. I spent about 10 years in and out the hospital uh, getting skin grafts and trying to gain the structure and mobility back in my, in my right hand specifically. Um, as I grew older, I gravitated towards arts and crafts. My physical therapist told me that I needed to work on strengthening um, you know, my fingers. So I did that. I, I sculpted, I painted, I, I created so many things. I also grew up in a household that wasn't very welcoming, you can say. Um, so I was confined to my room a lot. I practiced a lot on my hair, uh, thanks to MTV and the music video. And I was like, oh my God, I want to do those, those hairstyles on me. And so I practiced on myself. I practiced on my sister. My brother, um, you know, I messed up his hair a lot of times. Um, <laughs> I messed up with his hair a lot of times. Um, I, I've started practicing a lot on us because we couldn't afford going to a salon or a barber shop, so to speak. Then I got older, got into my teenage years, and as I was going into high school, unfortunately my mother she passed away, and my father he 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 got locked up he went to prison so i had to assume the responsibility for myself and and my brother and my sister however um my brother he got shipped to the military my little sister ended up in a foster care but i was too old i guess uh to be put to a program so i ended up becoming homeless um, this situation was a turning point in my life. You can say that I experienced a lot of hardship, a lot of struggle. I was still trying to figure out who I was as a person. I can tell you that cutting hair helped me get through those times. It was because of a pair of clippers that I was able to eat for the day, that I was able to find shelter for the day and that's just how it's been you know um my creativity allowed me to express myself through haircuts so it was it was also therapy for me so to speak and it was something that i had to overcome because i'm i was a woman at that time i was young at that time also so getting people to believe in me was very hard like i really had to prove myself um, and that's when I knew I wanted to be in the hair industry because I felt like doing this was a voice. Uh, I, it gave me a voice. It gave me something to prove to everyone that I was strong enough of a person to accomplish anything that I wanted, that I was talented enough to do men's cut, you know, um, and this journey has just been non-stop ever since. What hairstyle requests makes you die inside? I absolutely do not like cutting high and tights. Uh, those extremely super high fades um, that just creates total imbalance in a haircut. To me, when I look at sculpting, um, a haircut around any type of head shape I like to create balance and unity and harmony within that haircut and a high and tight just does not do that it literally just takes everything off um, the lateral sides of the head and whatever's left on top is it, left on top but those type of end results create more I don't even know how to explain it I just don't like it <laughs> how would your workmates describe you it would have to be I'm a free spirit I love laughing and smiling and singing and dancing and being quirky and just being so full of love and life and energy um, maybe sometimes I could be a little overbearing but it's just me <laughs> um, I guess they would also describe me as being helpful um 
open hearted and, and you know willing to apply myself wherever necessary um go getter i get that a lot too um i don't know <laughs> i just love being me i guess whose hair would you most like to work on one of my goals is to be a production barber and thanks to Glamily Enterprise and Standing Ovations Entertainment, I have the opportunity coming up next year to do so. If I had to say what celebrity I would love to cut, it would definitely be Terrence Howard. And yes, uh, just being able to work on this set of Empire would be an absolute dream for me. Whose hair would you least like to work on? If I had to say who whose hair I would like to work on the least, I don't know. <laughs> because I take every opportunity as it is. You know, I, I love um, working with people. That's the whole point of this industry. Um, I would just hope that the opportunities that come right, it would be with nice, caring, you know, genuine individuals. Um, and I know that in this industry that may not always be true. So it's just that fear of coming across um, people who may come off as stuck up or, or conceited. What's the most you've ever spent on a pair of scissors? About $200. I'm more of a clipper clipper person so I, I don't mind making the investment for a bunch of clippers and trimmers and um, you know whatever I need to build my barbering kit I can tell you now that with the change in the industry especially working with more uh, medium to long length type of haircuts and, and doing more of these pompadours and comb overs and longer hairstyles I am looking into a pair of Hanzo uh, shears and I'm about ready to spend these $800 real quick. What's the best thing about your job? The impact that I have with every individual that I come across with. Um, not only am I a barber, not only am I a stylist, I'm also an educator. Um, I have the pleasure of working at the Palm Mitchell School in San Antonio and now moving on to national education along with the education that I provide as um, my own company through Fades Blades Trades. I have a platform in which I can inspire others through my story. Um, I can encourage others to pursue their dreams, to create some kind of a plan to help them pursue what they want out of life. Um, I just love the impact that I have all the way across the board because it took a lot for me to get here. I also love looking at the light in every one of my clients' eyes after I've completed a haircut, a color service, or any type of service um, for that matter. It's, it's just a really good feeling. Um, that this industry allows you to touch so many lives in in such a personal way so that would have to be the best part what's the worst thing about your job hmm i don't really have a worst part maybe something along the lines as a little overbearing could possibly be you know the amount of traveling that i do uh, waking up early and planning these flights and packing and unpacking and figuring out what you're taking with you and then um, the stress of maybe forgetting something that'll probably be the only um stressful part of this career because i love every single aspect i mean it's even a blessing that uh, this career has got me traveling to so many different places but yeah definitely definitely just building that discipline for traveling it is something that you gotta you know keep in mind do you have a barbering hero the barber hero that stands out to me the most who really made a major impact in my life would have to be christina gory 
She is a Lady Barber, CEO of Lady Barbers United and a, a wall national educator. She, she to me defines what it means to be strong, independent, to be firm and consistent in your career, especially being a woman in a male-dominated industry. It's because of her that I have anchored on to my beliefs as being a woman in this industry is. Um, Lady Barber, to me, it is a title that I hold very you know, near and dear to my heart. But she was the first woman to win a Bronner Brothers Barber Battle. The only woman, um, matter of fact. And just being able to think about her and the influence and the path that she's paved for other influential women in this industry has been very inspirational to me.